Forestry. We were founded back in 1685 by a gentleman named Simon van der Stel, who was the first governor of the Cape. So how the wine industry actually began in South Africa or in Cape Town was from actually a gentleman named Jan van Riebeck who founded Cape Town in the first place. He was actually the first guy to make wine and grow vines here in the Southern Hemisphere and he did so in the company gardens. Unfortunately those vines no longer exist, okay? But the vines that he did grow weren't of big quantity and the quality that came out of those vines was not very good either. So when Simon van der Stel got deployed here as governor of the Cape back, back all those years, he asked Simon van der Stel to go out and find good land to make good wine. And in doing, in doing so, he founded the Stellenbosch area and he founded Constantia Valley. And because of that, we are the oldest wine producing estate in the Southern Hemisphere. Okay, Stellenbosch will argue with us and tell us they're older, but there were other farms back then. Okay, we were solely founded for making wine. And because of that title, we are so nicely accepting. We like to stick with tradition of using cork in all of our bottles. Okay, so you'll not find screw cap on any one of our bottles. With the corks, we do have to import them in from Portugal and Spain, as the cork trees here in South Africa, do not, they're not very reliable. They break, they crumble, they, there's a whole lot of problems with them. What you have probably noticed within the wine industry is a lot of people have resorted to using screw cap. Okay. Don't worry, the wine's not cheap, it's not anything wrong with your wine, it's just your company or the wine company is cutting down costs. And why they're doing that is because it's getting really expensive to use corks in your wine. For a slight indication, it's about nine rand for a cork, okay? We, us personally here make 450,000 to 500,000 bottles in a year. And then you still got to take into account that the rand is not doing so well against the foreign exchange. And then you've got to put it all. For us, it works out to be about between 3.5 to 4 million rand a year just on corks. So if you've got a small estate or a small wine farm, you will not be able to cope with that pricing, which is why a lot of places are resorting to screw cap. The only way I can say that a cork is much better to use in your wine is if you're going to let it rest for a little while, okay? Five years, ten years, whatever the case is. A cork will allow minuscule amounts of air into your wine, which will allow it to breathe nicely and allow all the beautiful flavors to come through. Whereas a screw cap won't do that, but if you're going to drink your wine tomorrow, screw cap's perfectly fine as well, okay? And why we actually do have that shortage is because it takes about 150 to 200 years for a cork tree to grow to its full potential size. Okay, once it's there, the bark's been taken off and you're left with this strip over here. That's cleaned out, cut out and stamped and we get it in that form once it's done. It will take another 12 years for this tree to grow back again. So that's just the reason why there is a shortage and why people are using screw caps. Okay. So this is what we call our production floor. Okay, this is where the magic starts. Okay, this is where we start the process of making our wines. What I'm going to do is I'm going to point out a few of the machines you see in the room and some of the tanks. When we get to the end of the room, I'll put it all together for you and show you the bigger picture of how the wine is actually starting to be made. Okay. First thing I want to point out to you are the two big machines you see on the side here. Okay. This is what we call a pneumatic press. Okay. Back in the olden days, they used to have those half-open barrels and they used to stomp their feet in the grapes. Okay. Very unhygienic, but it worked. Unfortunately, we use these ones now. And what these do is it basically has got a, a balloon-like membrane on the in inside which contracts and expands at a certain bar of pressure. Then to point out these big silver tanks you see throughout, this is what we call fermentation tanks. So this is where the grape juice will come and yeast will be added to the grape juice. Okay, that yeast is going to interact with the sugar particles of the grapes and turn it into alcohol. Generally for a red wine, it will sit here anywhere between five and seven days. And for a white wine, it will sit here anywhere between a week to two weeks. Okay. These two tanks over here are 5,000 liters. The ones opposite are 10,000 and the ones in the corner are 15,000. You can see. Fun fact for you guys, the grapes are actually exactly the same color on the inside. Yeah. So what actually gives the red wine its coloring is the amount of time it spends with its skins. Each red grape has got its own unique texture and coloring to it. So that's how it gets its own unique texture and coloring is from the amount of time it spends with its grapes. Okay, this is going to be a lot of information. Hold on a second. So from the mush cooler, white wine, is going to go into the pneumatic press, which I showed you earlier. So here's that balloon-like membrane. It's going to expand outwards. It's going to get all that juice to filter through. All that grape skins and juice and, and all the skins and the seeds are going to stay behind. Okay. From here, it's going to be cleaned out in the stabilization tank. From the stabilization tank, it's going to go into the fermentation tank. From the fermentation tank, it gets bottled. And there's your white wine. Okay? 
happens very quickly, which is why white wines generally out a lot sooner than our red. For a red wine, however, mush cooler, straight into the fermentation tank. Skins, seeds, everything. It will sit there for those five to seven days and it will just enjoy its company and its skins. Okay, which is why it gets its unique coloring. And then with blends also, once they get blended again, they get blended with their skins and everything. So their beautiful coloring comes and it's unique to each one. Okay. From that mush cooler, oh, sorry, from the fermentation tank, it will then only get put into a pneumatic press and then clean out, and then the fermentation. So it goes part of a bit of a process, but it will take a lot longer for a red wine to come out if it is going to be wooded as well, because straight from that fermentation tank, it's going to get put back into barrels afterwards. Okay. Okay, so this is our maturation cellar. This is where we come to store our wine for a couple of years in beautiful barrels that brings out even more flavors in our wine. Okay. The barrels that we do use are French oak, okay, we import them from France. We do reuse them over again, about three to four times maximum, depending on how, what wine we use or what wine is used in them, okay. After we're done with them, they then get sold off to whiskey and brandy manufacturers who actually like to use it for the colouring it gives their brandy and whiskies, okay. The barrels you see in front of you, the smaller ones, they're 225 litres. That's approximately 300 bottles out of each one, okay? Just another fun fact for you, it takes about 600 to 800 grapes in order to make one bottle of wine. With these 225 litre barrels, you notice they're actually quite messy and they don't look very nice and appealing. We do apologize, but in the winemaking process, what we do is we fill them all the way to the top. So when that cork gets put in, it overflows, and that's just to ensure that no extra oxygen is on the inside of that barrel while it sits there. For a white wine, it can sit anywhere between 10 and 12 months. And then for a red wine, for us, it's anywhere between 12 and 19 months. The first wine you're tasting is our Sauvignon Blanc 2016. Okay, this is what we like to call a nice braai wine here in South Africa. Barbecue wine, okay. It's very nice and easy going, but at the same time goes amazingly well with marinated meat. Agora que a gente já conheceu a mais antiga e tradicional vinícola aqui da África do Sul, a gente vai para uma outra região aqui pertinho, chamada Stellenbosch, onde a gente pode encontrar mais de 200 pequenos produtores, mas com vinhos tão bons quanto. E a nossa ideia é justamente essa, tomar o máximo de vinho que a gente conseguir. Vamos lá? Filma aqui, pederneiras. Essas mais de mesa... Ai, 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 ai... Because our berries is done, 
we use the Isikati and our new port. Uh, we call it port. We call it uh, Cape Vintage in South Africa. But Isikati is our own border style blend. And this blend has Cabernet Sauvignon, Petit Vento, and Cabernet Franc. Um, Isikati is also a Torza. In Torza, it means time. And in Zulu, it means future. Then we brought out our port. Now this one has just Cabernet Sauvignon with alcohol. Now I enjoy this one, especially on um, a winter's night. So it's a dessert wine, um, high alcohol level. Oh, dessert, dessert. Yes. Oh, I like this. Yeah. Mm. Já pegou, né? Eu peguei um. Nós pegamos dois, né? Nós pegamos dois na outra vinícola lá, que era um do Porto. Esse, né? Tá. Era um Porto, né? Ele... Não, não. Porque não pode levar na mão. 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 Aí ele compreende. Como que a gente vai levar essas trouxas? É tão triste que nós não exportamos nossos vinhos. É muito, muito triste. Mas nós somos muito pequenos. So we just sell here, we don't sell anywhere else, not even in South Africa. So for me, I think it's a pity. But if we did that, we had, would have no one left to yeah. sell here. <laughs> Aqui, uma do lado da outra. Sim, uma do lado da outra. São 200 vinícolas aqui. Caralho. Nos convidaram para tomar uma champanhota agora. <risos> Maybe your name. My name. Mm -hmm. Mingo. Mingo. M-E-N-N-E-L. Good. Mingo. Mingo. Okay. So this is our tasting options here. Mm -hmm. First one here is our sparkling wine tasting. That's more of sweeter range. So we have two nano colleagues going with this as well. Then we have our MCC tasting, that's more French champagne style. Mm -hmm. So that is going from dry to semi-sweet. Agora, terceiro round. Ai, a gente já tá ficando bêbado. Não compramos nada, mas foi, foi legal. Foi divertido e eu peguei as tampinhas das garrafas que eu faço coleção, então valeu a pena. Foi divertido e foi bom. Acabamos de tomar uma champanhota, show de bola, terceira vinícola, champanhonícola nesse caso. Agora vamos para a próxima.
ocupando isso aqui, tipo... Hello! How are you? Estamos assim, digamos que... Mais para o lado que para cá. Dia ok. Estamos de Uber, eu não estou dirigindo. E agora a gente vai tomar uma cerveja de morango. 